Well, this is quite interesting. You may be looking at this and have no idea what it is. Unless maybe if you've seen the Overdrive channel where they talked about this. Basically what this is doing is taking the axle input and then to the output, it's allowing you to have any sort of angle for camber or toe that you want. Now you may be hearing that and thinking, sure, okay, but this is actively doing it during the lap. And if we go all the way down to the bottom section, they make some wide old claims 4.8 seconds but a racing driver being a little bit more attuned to this sort of thing is still able to get 2.8 seconds quicker around a track now it doesn't matter what track you're on that amount of gain is a lot i mean except maybe if it's the nurburgring whether you like it or not Technically, really every car is a pointed square car. It's all about getting that power down so then you can maximize that straight. As long as there is like obviously a straight after the corner. Sometimes there's a chicane and cornering actually is more important there, but getting out of the corner is the most important thing. Now, to get more grip on the rear, one of the easiest things to do is to add more camber. So then that way when going around a corner, it'll just hunker perfectly. Now. If you have too much camber, it's going to cause it to understeer. Not enough camber, and you're going to be oversteering all the time. The next thing is toe-in amount. Too much toe-in will hurt on a straightaway, and too much toe-in will also hurt on corner entry. But on corner exit, you're going to want toe-in if you've got a lot of power and a lot of weight at the rear, so then that way it'll try to drag itself inwards. And that is the crux of this system. It's going to be always active to give you always everything you want at exactly the right time. That way when it comes to the straight itself, you can power on so much better than you could otherwise. Now ignore my driving, I'm really terrible at using a controller in these sorts of cars. So, my goal is to try to figure out what exactly it is they're doing and try to replicate it. I'm not going to do it the same way they do. Instead, I'm going to work with some hydros and you know, move the wheel around that way. So if we have a look at the hub itself, now this is actually made in the suspension, not in the hub section, so it gets a little bit confusing. But you can see that we got a bunch of things here, but only four points which really particularly matter. Now, if we turn beams on, we can see that there's a wheel node here. Now, there's only ever two wheel nodes, and then another wheel node that's kind of hidden right in here. In fact, actually, I could turn nodes on. RW1L and RW1LL. These are our points that we're going to be moving. Now, this is connected to a... L I don't know why my computer keeps restarting. There's something wrong with it. I need to get a new one, apparently. Why? Oh, money, please. Uh, okay, so... If you're not subscribed and helping me get to 100,000 subscribers, you could please do that. And um, if you have excess money, you might consider becoming a channel member. I'm going to try turning my graphics down to lowest. Oh, God. Back in 2012 again. Anyway, as I was saying, this has more connections to what it needs, but most of those are dampening. The only connections we really care about are the ones that are going to these hub nodes. There's a torsion bar that goes from here and then from here to here. Basically, that's going to want to prevent it from rotating at all, which is going to be a bit of a problem. Uh, hopefully we can not worry about that. That might not be an issue. Here, though, we seem to have all our wheel attached nodes. Perfect. Okay, so it's not in the hub section. That means that suspension rear is the one that we want. Then this section is about to go bye-bye. So we do this by forward slash star, then star forward slash. Then we're going to stick hydros in here. Luckily, we have some hydros examples probably in suspension front. Perfect. Now... I don't know whether to create a controller or create Lua the way that I normally do, but I think I'm going to go with the way that I normally create Lua, which is usually meant to be connected to inputs, but I am not doing that. Then in here, we're going to have to figure it. So uh, ooh, what are the hub names? We have RH1L, RH3L, 4L, and 6L. Let's grab you guys and plop you in here. These old ones we won't need, but we'll leave them around for being able to take from this code if we so need. And let's try... Oh, yep, there we go. Let's try putting that in. Wait, hold on. Uh... Oh. 
I've done this wrong. Okay, so there's two wheel nodes. I tried to add hydros to both of them. What I'm meaning to do, and I had this in my head, but I forgot to tell you guys that we are going to leave that one solid. This is the only one that we're gonna move. So we can get rid of that one that has the axle thing in there and hope that that one just magically works on its own. So that's good to get rid of. Whew, okay. We now have all of the suspension on the rear right side set to axle lift where did i grab this from what the hell let's just for the time being to test this out go steering then rear suspension active rear suspension hub i don't like my chances but if we steer okay you can see that it's actively like moving a wheel in and out which is great why did this side break first though what the hell and putting that here i don't understand why it was moving the left side because there was no code added to the left side okay this time Okay, it's doing it, but it is acting differently. And uh, that is working perfectly. Okay, let's try doing this just to the camber. So there's a big mess in here, but we're gonna be going with three R and one R. Yep, that's worked. And if we do steering, okay. Perfect. Let's try putting one of those to minus and see if this actually works <laughs> expectedly. No, it's still just moving the thing in and out, which is unfortunate. Well, at least that is actually giving us what we want. So this is not going to be steering. This is going to be camber up. I think, wait, hold on. Uh, what we're looking for is three is camber up. So you'll go in there. This will be camber down down and then this will be toe f and toe r that should about do it let's just oh, what is this okay so i've got a new extension that i've tried to add on it is something made by the devs themselves as an extension and it's actually looking very powerful they say it's not ready and i don't know if this is their fault but this is really annoying hopefully eventually I'll learn how to get rid of that. I also just realized that this is going to be side dependent because sometimes you're going to want camber, sorry, toe to be different on either side. Same with camber on either side. So this is going to have to have a right and left kind of, ah, kind of like a, a notation on it. So this will be R on each side and this will be L on each side. Then we're going to start making our own Lua file. And I always love to grab the lure from the pickup because it's the easiest for me to understand but then again this is probably going to need to be a controller file still damn it i don't know how to make controller files i just i not brain okay let's start playing with things we only need two to start with and that's what we'll go from i think this is what sends out to work so maybe this will be let's start with camber fuck get camber up on the right side i'm gonna start with trying to grab your values but i've already forgotten how to get these values in oh god no looking at that old old documentation i think it's just called your and it's in radiance so that's all right try to work with it actually looking at the zentorno wing mod that i did i think this might be a better one to work off on as an example because in here we've already got like steering input perfect okay did a little bit of tweaking. The file is looking very small at the moment. And if we steer, which is what I've got to set up to at the moment, which is not what we're going to be using, uh, you can see that it's uh, working now. Perfect. Now that's not only pulling on the top, but it's also pushing from the bottom. So, I mean, it's going to kick out a little bit off angle. But that's mostly because I don't think, yeah, as you can see, it's not perfectly symmetrical all the way around. Uh, we also have toe rear. Let's do that. So now if we refresh, we... Do we get toe? Oh, I thought we got toe, but don't think so. Let's get rid of... Oh, no, hold on. Let's get rid of that for now. And let's see, is it... It looks like it's wanting to change the toe angle, but the kind of guard. And it only seems to work when going left. That's probably due to... Ah, okay, there we go. 0 0.8. It apparently doesn't want to go in which is a problem now it should work a lot better so steering okay that's a lot better let's take this to 
0.5. So like extra 50% or minus 50%. Eh, damn it. Why must you be like this? Oh, I like instantly figured it out. It's because I've got like uh, this if statement here and it has to be steering at some point. So let's go with electric value steering input control C and this will be Oh, good. Okay. Well, we actually don't need to do much at all. We can get rid of that other end thing. So it'll just update and instantly give our steering input. I don't know why I was making it so complicated. There we go. Still garbage. Mm, well, you know what? It'll work. It'll do. Okay. Now I'm going to have to start to work with your angle and steering steering stuff. I'm looking at like all of this stuff about getting the yaw, but it's it's not going in. My brain no worky do. So instead I think we're going to work with get rid of that. Uh the gravitational x-axis. Or g-force x-axis. That's the one we want. All I gotta do is figure out how to use that. Or even get it in the first place, to be honest. Uh, okay. I've been working on this for a while now. I've been trying to be able to see what sort of information I get from Sensor GX, but when I tried to put it in the print area, it just did nothing. So instead what I've gone is, if the sensor is reading more than 0.2 G-forces, then it'll print out your equals big. So it should be more like G-force equals big. Now, if we do a refresh in here, there's a little bit of G-force big from uh, just spawning in. If I drive forwards, ooh, I noticed that this moved a lot. And yep, a lot of... Okay, so X is not working because that is forwards and backwards. If sensor GX2, which apparently is, I believe, a smoothed out version, is greater than one, then it does the print big. So, fresh car, driving in a straight line. And we're not getting any sort of weird erroneous values anymore. Brake really hard, still not getting anything particularly hard. If we turn, then we get it. So now we've got some extra values coming up there. At what point does it start coming in? 1.15? Not doing it. Okay. It's only doing it going leftwards. That's fun times. How much? Okay. What? What? How much on the x-axis is 1? That's like 0.1. Really? But it's set to this. Okay, let's set it to 10. Hopefully a factorial of 10 will take it from 0.1 to 1. Okay, and turning, nothing. There we go. Okay, so it's points of a thing. Oh, okay, well that's easy. Let's make a copy of this. And this time, if it's less than minus 10, it should go big left. Why can't I print out the values themselves? I goddamn don't know. So, going that way gives big, and then going the other way gives big left. Perfect. Okay, that means that those values are working. So even though I can't print them, I can rely on those values. Okay, sweet. So this is going to <laughs> have to be a little bit tricky. This is going to be X smoothed. Basically what we're doing here is because we already know that it uh, becomes quite rough around here sometimes, we're going to smooth it out ourselves. Now, do I know exactly how to do this? <laughs> no, not really. Electrics. Values for smooth is going to be sensors.gx maybe probably times dt times 0.5. In my head, this is now going to smooth it out over time. Maybe. But what this does allow me to do is use the print function again. And this time it's going to be electrics.values x smoothed. Okay, now, if we go more than 1G or 10Gs, it should start printing big. Perfect. Okay, I know exactly how this works now. Okay. Ha! Oh, got that worked. So, for the toe, we're going to go with... Hmm. Oh dear. Uh, we only want this to go up to one, so we're gonna 
times this by 0.1. Now what we're gonna do is put you as the factor for toe angle. So let's rearrange that. What happens is it's going to go, hey, this value smoothed is going to be set by GX times 0 0.01. Now we want that to be this way so we can modify this value at some other point. Then we got electrics value toe. So this is gonna be the toe value is set by our smooth value, which is set here by the GX value times 0 0.01. No more number updates there. Uh, let's get out. I, I can see it's jiggling. I hate this already. Is that- is, is, is that because I've got like the toe thing? I think it's because the toe thing is happening. Damn it! See, this is why I want a smoothing over time. Funnily enough, I put the DT back in. My values are just so much worse now. If we slow this way down, these numbers are all over the place. But if we go back up to normal speed, no more shaking. Nice. Okay, let's quickly grab it an app. And this one is going to be debug, specifically advanced wheel debug, which will tell us the toe value. Uh, is it gonna have toe on the rear? It is, good, okay. 1.4. And, oh, God damn it! I have to use a controller. It's currently set to zero. And if we break, I mean, it's, it's all over the place. Oh God, it's now moving on its own. If we start turning, you can see that the right toe value becomes two. If we go this way, comes hmm this is not giving us the results that we want god damn it okay i now have it printing out it's very very quick but uh printing out the electric values for the toe r which is the rear toe amount okay what will it reach currently it's still sitting in an exponent of like a really small value let's go to turn we're at 1.3 <gasps> It's showing 0 0.01 values. Ah, okay, well, this is fine, but then we wanna go here and times this by, ooh, how much? I'm guessing like 100, so then it'll max out at a value of one, maybe? Okay, our toe values are once again causing a jiggle. Damn it, but that's fine. If we start to turn, oh, our toe amount is now up to four on the toe. That is a lot more, oh, okay. You can see it more on that side more than anything else. Oh dear. Uh, but we really only need toe actually to be related to our acceleration input. Cause if we just have lots of toe in, this is gonna cause lots of understeer. So I, know, I think we're gonna times this by like 50 as opposed to hundred. And hopefully that'll mean that we don't get like massive amounts of toe and it should stay quite smooth. So a toe value of four. Is this any more smooth than- Okay, well, it's still broken hub. Damn it. I think we're gonna need to do an if statement and I didn't want to do one. All right. I took a bit of a break. <laughs> I needed to call off because I was getting really confused. We've done away with yaw, but we do still have the g-axis sort of thing. I got close to yaw, but I wasn't able to quite do it. Uh, we've smoothed some things out with uh, the more speed you have, the more it'll work, and the less speed you have, the less it'll do. So then we don't get the jiggling whilst in a stationary position. We then also have the throttle smoother. So the more throttle you have, the more toe it will give you that'll be advantageous. Basically, the reason why you have toe in would be for corner exit when you're trying to like power on as hard as you can the car's gonna want to say like if you're turning that way want to kick out that way but if you have toe in that way or toe in this way uh, as it's trying to kick out that way due to inertia it's also going to want to pull you that way so it's kind of like pulling 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 and pulling you forward so that's why it is attached to throttle input as well then we have the camber which is just basically only going to be on the X G force and then smoothing out by speed and I was just about to test this out give it a little bit of a test quickly and the real best one is going to be like the handling course because that is really low speed and very much dependent on this so this is just the regular all-wheel drive version and we're expecting this to be tricky to handle because this car is not really meant for these sorts of things and I think that's because they have like toe set up wrong on these cars by default and oh god the graphics are horrible I think I might have a 
power supply unit problem, which might be just overheating and then everything's having to work overtime. Maybe? I'm not sure. I really don't want it to be my GPU. So we've got graphics turned all the way down. And a 118 across the line. All righty. Let's now pick our active version and just see if we're on the right track because I don't know whether I'm doing this quite right. And I feel that it would probably be advantageous if I was able to get your to work, but I just, I can't figure it out. And also I should mention that I have none of the driver aids that are on by default for this uh, to work around. Yes, yeah. Well, once I stop steering, the thing goes to zero input. I wonder if I could come up with a mathematical way to have this working whilst there's no steering angle on, because it is very important when I'm drifting and gotten zero sting uh, steering angle. I suppose I should say not drifting, but like when I got enough slip angle that there's no steering. So maybe I should undo that. Hmm. Because at the moment, if I have zero steering, Oh, this is throttle smooth. If I have zero throttle, then... Hmm. Okay, maybe I should get rid of throttle. Uh, it's doing okay still. See, I don't want to get, like, lift off oversteer and then have it exacerbated by the fact that my fancy active rear hub isn't doing anything anymore. But all we have to do is be 117 and see whether that's going down the right way. Okay, well, then we went really slow. Very little throttle, and it, it still went. Exactly the same time. Really? Oh no, 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 it's about a second faster. It is a very short track, so maybe that's right. Okay, you know what? Let's keep going back and forth until it levels out. And across the line, even faster again. So this is where you have to keep going back and forth until you start to reach a level out point because at the moment it looked like it was going to be the active version was faster, but now the normal version is faster. Let's keep going back and forth. Okay, well, I've managed to do like a bunch of low 15s, a 14, and even a 13 with this thing. So it is faster. Is the vehicle good to drive yet? No, the, the scintilla is still a beastly car to handle. Now, as you may see in the background, my steering wheel setup is kind of dismantled at the moment, so I'm gonna hand this over now to a Stig. So I handed the mod over to Cesari. Uh, Cesari is a creator I've been a fan of since the times when his channel was bigger than mine. I told him to take it around Laguna Seca. The problem is that I'd only tested it on slower speed runs. And this is where Cesari showed me Quite a fatal flaw. Yeah, the wobble I couldn't fix, but the verticality? Well, I took the mod back, messed with the code a little bit, and crucially took in the vertical g-forces. Did a little bit of math related to it, and then I set it to undo all of the toe if the g-forces became too low on the vertical axis. So now when you're going around corners, you're gonna get the normal toe in, a little bit of understeer, but you're able to accelerate a lot sooner. Damn it. Let me show that again, except uh, this time be a little less terrible at it. I'm not great with the controller, to be honest. And then again, I'm not trained with a, a wheel either. But we'll see as we go over the crest at a high speed. Oh, I'm gonna have to lift a little bit because I got it all messed up. I'm not able to fix the death wobble. I don't, I don't know how to really do that apart from changing it to your angle, but I just don't know how to calculate your. Going over the crest, however, the thing is nice and stable, ease onto the transition for the brakes, and completely overshoot it. Well, that was my fault. And because of that poor driving, that's why I'm gonna hand it back to Cesari. And in the meantime, Cesari went out and did a clean lap with a baseline car. Not gonna lie though, his baseline time kind of spits on all of the previous laps I've ever done around here. Great. Anyway, this is now him using the final revision. I did everything I could to make it more stable and predictable. Unfortunately, I gave up on trying to use the sideways g-force as the base for the toe angle. And I just knew it would give more understeer the way I set it up. But as you can see here, it's just instantly so much more controllable that it just kind of made me think that it might just do it uh, but nope it was nearly two seconds slower fuck well that was this car i mean it's it's not perfect i don't think the scintilla will ever be a perfect car it's just 
it's it's just really poorly balanced. It's just not a good car. Even in its all-wheel drive configuration like this, it's still really beastly control. Even with the rear axle stuff set up, I, doing this recording just for, to get this lap was really difficult. It, I suppose I'm being overly harsh on it. These sorts of cars really require you to drive it in a very specific way, and I have none of the driver aids on, and that's kind of my own fault. Though, still, understeer, under braking. Now, I just I I did it wrong. Maybe I'll make like a really amazing ABS system one day that goes like: if there's too much understeer, then move the brake bias backwards, and if there's too much oversteer, it moves the brake bias to the front. I think that would be a perfect kind of addition to this sort of car because ABS currently only just kind of moves uh, like the brakes off depending on how much wheel spin there is which is not the only thing to take into consideration when having a brake by sort of thing the only thing I want to take into consideration though is thanking my channel members and that specifically includes the Rogue Tick the Crown Priest. Now this mod will be up on my Patreon but it'll also eventually be on the repository once it gets approved there as well. For now though, as I spin out, I'll catch you all next time. Goodbye. <laughs>